Hi again, and welcome back to Celebrating Act Two. And this, our eighth, number eight installment of a special series on uh, uh, Medicare, health insurance, all kinds of stuff with our special guest, Aaron Zolbrod. Um, this has been a, a wonderful experience. We've got uh, a couple more to go. Uh, but Art, you pointed out that uh, there's people other than the us seniors who need to know about this stuff. Yeah, uh, really, because, um, uh, uh, well, in effect, we're, we're taking from this the senior uh, angle because there are people who are uh, getting ready, getting ready to be eligible for Medicare, and generally it's sixty five. I know that. Uh, actually, we'll get into that with Aaron some other time, but uh, who have younger children or grandchildren sure. that they cover under their current uh, things. Some of them are going to retire, so they really need to get onto Medicare, and others may still be working for their employers uh, for another five or six or seven years or, or longer. And so those are the two sort of areas of what do you do with dependents if you're getting ready for Medicare and you, you're going on it? Or if you're still working for an employer and you still pay the penalties on party and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, Aaron, we're we're going to put you on a spot. There's a lot of moving parts in this part. A lot of stuff. Yeah, this is, might be our longest segment right here, um, as we talk about you know different types of people and what do they do to insure themselves, um, especially if they're not employed. Um, you know, they retire early. You mentioned it. You've got kids that are turning 26, or you're retiring. Um, what do you do? What do they do? Mm -hmm. um, so Aaron, I, I want to interrupt for just a second because I sure. think it's a, a good opportunity right now to point out to people that you are a licensed insurance agent um, in Pennsylvania, but you're, you're licensed in 20 different states. And you, you while you may be an expert in Medicare and the, all this complicated stuff that goes around it, you're also selling health insurance to all kinds of people, not just. Yeah, seniors. we're, I mean, we're, we're, listen, the cool thing is, is we only do health insurance related stuff. We do have one life insurance agent. I don't do it. We have one guy that's, you know, an expert in it, but otherwise we are, we are individual insurance for people who are self-employed, work for somebody who doesn't mm -hmm. give them insurance or retire early. It's a huge part of our business. We are we do employer group plans. So if you own a business and you want to insure your employees, it's a great way to attract and maintain um, good employees. Um, we do that, and then of course we do the Medicare, which is probably right. fifty percent or more of our business. But you know, there's a huge a need for the individual, and we're also very knowledgeable about that as well. So we're gonna we're gonna talk a lot about that this segment. Good. Okay. Good. Take it away. So I'm looking forward to hearing about the rest of this. Yeah, I think I think let's start. Art mentioned, you know, if you have kids, right? Um, and there's this magic number of 26 years old. So if you're working, um, and your and your child children are turning 26, that is the age where employers can force your kids off the plan. Um, now they can they can. The law is if they offer insurance to uh, um, to dependents. They have to offer it until the dependents are 26. They can voluntarily do it till, thir till until 30, but very few employers do that. Most of the time, they're going to kick the kids off at 26. Um, so I want to talk about what those people and maybe also college students. I mean, obviously, if you're 26 and you're getting kicked off, if your kids are getting kicked off the plan, hopefully they're working for an employer that provides insurance. That would be the best way to, to, to get coverage. Um, if that's not possible, maybe they're in grad school or medical school, um, you know, we have to get them insurance. Um, the possibilities are, number one, you could get medical assistance. Um, a college student obviously may not be working a lot, maybe part time, may not be working. Um, and anybody who is in most states who who earns 138 percent of the poverty level, federal poverty level or less qualifies for medical assistance, regardless of how many assets they have. That was part of the Affordable Care Act, which I really liked that, you know, if you had some money saved, you know, you, you weren't forced, you know, you weren't forced to take it all out, and spend it on health insurance that you can get medical assistance. So that's the number, you know, one thing I would look at if when I talk to somebody whose kid is going to be, are they working? Well, no, they're not. Well, hey, they qualify for medical assistance. Let's get them signed up. It's free. It's great coverage. Um, 
you know, let's do it that way. Uh, the other option would be an Affordable Care Act plan, the ACA, Obamacare, whatever you wish to call it. Um, those people who don't qualify for medical assistance, um, you know, are especially if they're younger and they're working and don't get insurance through their employer, they're going to get very good prices on health insurance right now. Um, part of the American Rescue, Rescue Act um, increased subsidies, number one, eliminated the cap on income to get subsidies. I think that should have been done from the minute the Affordable Care Act went into, it, went into a play. Um, and I think the American Rescue Act was one of the first times the middle class was ever got a very nice benefit. That the middle class, the working person, the retiree who worked all their lives finally got some benefit. And um, I really, really was a big fan. I don't want to get into politics. I don't want to do that. I was a super big fan of the, the expansion of, of subsidies and the elimination of, of the income limit. It used to be if you made $52,000 and you were single or $69,000 as a married couple, you were just couldn't get subsidies. And it really kept people from retiring early um, because those people, you know, the, the married couple making 70,000 may sound, it's not a lot of money. Um, you know, if you've got a mortgage and a car payment and you're paying your kids college tuition or paying it back, that's not a lot of money. And to try to retire early, people couldn't do it because it was $1,600 or more for health insurance for those people. Well, now those people are going from paying 1,600 to maybe paying three or four or 500 and retiring early is, is an option for them. Uh, and so, so again, for, for, for a child, a student, you're getting kicked off at 26. Affordable Care Act is a great way to go. Um, for people who want to retire early, it's a great way to go. If you're, you know, run and retire before you're 65, um, really, really good opportunity to get some really low premiums and some and pretty decent health insurance. Um, I want to say this, be careful of indemnity plans. Okay, just had a client yesterday who got suckered into one. Okay, major, we got to talk about major medical. Major medical are insurance companies that limit what you can be billed in a calendar year. Okay, generally they're going to limit it to, you know, anywhere between $2,500 and $8,500 a year. So God forbid you need a million dollars worth of chemo. The most you can be billed is, you know, X amount. That's called your maximum out of pocket. Indemnity plans are sold kind of over the phone. These are also snake oil salesmen. And they're going to call and tell you if they, they're preying on people who don't get subsidies and they're and they're and they're pitching this as an alternative to the ACA. And they're it's not major medical insurance. I, my client yesterday, I said, look at your card. Look at your card. It's going to tell you this, it's going to say this isn't major medical on the card. Look at your card. Pull out the cards. It said this is a limited benefits plan. And I basically said, if you got cancer, you are not protected. If you had a heart, if you had a complications from a surgery, if you needed medication that's that's thousands of dollars, you're not protected. Um, you know, if you need a skilled nursing, you're not protected. You might as well cancel that because whatever you think you got, it's not nearly enough to protect you. And so if 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 you know you need to know what your major health insurance companies are in your area, like Ky I know in California it's Kaiser, it's Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, and I'm not sure what the other big one is in Pennsylvania, in Western Pennsylvania, it's UPMC or Highmark. And if you're not buying a UPMC or Highmark insurance plan, you're not buying major medical insurance. You're buying garbage that is not going to protect you in a catastrophic situation. You're going to end up bankrupt or you're going to end up not getting the care you need because the hospital is going to say, we're not giving you that chemo or that surgery unless you give us, you know, $26,000, $40,000 up front. We're just not, you know, we know you don't have insurance to cover it. And so be careful of what's, those are called indemnity plans. Okay, so, so we want to get into that. Um, I want to talk about employees. And then we're going to talk about people who are working past 65. But um, it's not as simple. If you're an employee and your employer offers you health insurance and the cost of that health insurance, what they're taking out of your paycheck is less than 8.5% of your salary, you cannot get a marketplace plan, an ACA plan, using a subsidy. You can only get subsidies if your employer does not offer you insurance or if the employer provided insurance is more than 8.5% of 
what they're paying you, your gross wage. So a lot of times we get people who, who their employer is giving them coverage and it meets that 8.5% criteria, but it's got a $5,000 deductible. And so they're calling me up seeing if they can do better and, and they cannot because in that situation, you are not eligible for a subsidy, unfortunately, okay? And so um, I will say though, there's a new, that in 2023, something new came out. It used to be if your employer offered your spouse and kids coverage, they didn't have to pay any of it. And even if they made you pay full cost for it, you weren't eligible for a subsidy. They changed that. So the 8.5% rule now, 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 now goes on to the spouse and the children. So a lot of employers will give the employee coverage at 100%. They'll pay 100% for the employee or 75%. But if you want to add your spouse or your children, you have to pay the full cost, which could be $300 to $800 a month. If that's the case, now your spouse or, or your children can go on the marketplace and get subsidies. That's brand new for um, 2023. So, you know, a simple phone call to us if you want to know the ins and outs of that. Hey, Aaron, can you explain that again? I just want to make sure that, you know, we haven't really gone over that with the listeners. Anybody who's watching, if you've just got general questions, please, you can reach out to us. You can email me personally, um, Aaron, at, Aaron at getyourbestplan.com. I can answer those questions. I realize we're going over tons of information each and every one of these episodes. And my gosh, if you watched all of these episodes back to back, God bless you. Um, <laughs> If your head's not spinning by now with all the information I've given out, I mean, my gosh, good for you. Um, but you can always, you know, email me or call us and talk to any of our agents. Actually, they're all experts. Um, you can do that as as, as well. So, um, lastly, let's talk about those people who want to retire early. Um, obviously, the ACA is is allowed you to do that. Um, you know, if you want to know if you can afford to retire early and a lot of people need that piece of the puzzle, they need the quotes to see if you can afford it. A lot of people, listen, just can't, they can't afford 800 or $1,600 a month for health insurance. And so they, they're forced to keep working at 65, but the American rescue act, the portion of that increased subsidies really made it much easier for, for people to retire. So if you didn't think you could before, you may be able to, um, now let's talk about people. And there's a lot more of these people now is those who are working past their 65th birthday. Okay. If you're working past your 65th birthday, you do not have to enroll in part B. If you or your spouse are working and getting insurance coverage that covers you and or your spouse, you can opt out of part B. And for 75% of people that usually is best to do that you continue on your employer coverage and you wait, you postpone part B until you A, either retire or B, your insurance coverage gets worse and Medicare is a better value. I do recommend that everybody um, have that analyzed because there are 25% of those out there who are better off to take Medicare and get a supplement or advantage plan than to stay on their plan at work, especially if there's a big deductible um, you know, that you know you're going to meet. Um, it, it can definitely be in your best interest to go on Medicare and, and take a supplement. So I would definitely advise people, you know, to reach out and, and, you know, I'll need to know a, what you're paying, b what your deductible is, c what your maximum out of pocket is, um, and, and, and what drugs you're taking. And that will determine whether I would recommend, um, you know, staying on your employer plan or opting out of an opting out of part B or going on Medicare. And I will say this, there are employers who incentivize people not to take insurance, and I'm one of them. I pay my employees um, $400 a month if they can get their insurance elsewhere. I give them a $400 raise. I give my people who are Medicare, I give them $500 a month because it costs me about $600 a month to insure my, my people who are 55 and under. And it cost me $1,000 a month to insure my people that are 60 and older. Wow. So I incentivize them. It's a win-win for everybody. I pay them money. I save, even though I'm paying them money, it's less, it's cheaper for me to pay them, you know, 6,000 if they're on Medicare or 4,800 if they're, if they're not, than it is to pay 100% of their health insurance. Wow. So there are employers that do that. 
And you can also go to your employer and even if they're not currently doing it, go to them and say, look, what are you going to do for me? I'm telling you a 65 year old costs about a thousand dollars a month to insure today. And so if you can talk them into giving you 500 bucks, they save 6,000, you're gaining 6,000, you go out and buy Medicare and a supplement for maybe 250 and you've just put, you know, you've just put $4,000 in your extra in your pocket and it's a win-win for everybody. Um, so that, that's, that's exactly why you need to, you know, you need to make that phone call and, and, and we can talk you through all that stuff. Yeah, I have a quick question Please. for you, um, if you don't mind. Um, Please. If, uh, you have, um, let's say you're 65, you're no longer working, you, whether you're retired or not, you're just no longer working, but you have dependent, uh, but let's just make it simple, dependent children who are under 26. So now you're at a point where, let's say you were working, but you were forced to you did a buyout and you no longer have your employer's insurance and you've got these younger children who could be 18, 15. There are a lot of people uh, who are 65 who have actually pretty young children. How do you right. handle all that? So first of all, I want to make a point, Art, that you can never be forced off your insurance plan at work. Your employer cannot right. force you off because you're 65. That would be totally illegal. It would be age discrimination. Basically, if you offer insurance to your employees, you have to offer it to every employee regardless of age. Okay. You cannot right. force them off. Um, now, you can. they can say if your spouse can get insurance elsewhere, they can't have our plan or your kids. But you cannot force the employee to say, you're 65, we're making you off the plan. That would be completely illegal. Okay. Um, and so, again, you start negotiating with that. Um, okay, I'll take, I'll go off, I'll go off your plan, but what are you going to give me? Because if you're not, I'm going to stay on. If you're not going to incentivize me, there's no reason to, there's no reason for me to come off. Um, and so, and so that's number one. And so again, then your kid, they would still, if, they, if again, and if they, if, if their policy is to, to provide insurance to spouses and children of the employee, they can't force you off because you're 65 either. And obviously you'd want to keep doing that. If, if you just say like, if you just have to retire or maybe the plan for you is so bad, it might be good for the kids, but it's so bad for you. It makes sense to go on Medicare. Then again, we're going to probably look at the eight, the affordable care act oh. or possibly um, medical assistance or chip is barely big right now, guys, Ch children's health insurance plans. Most States have them. We have an excellent, it's excellent in Pennsylvania. Um, there's, there's free chip, there's low cost chip, there's full cost chip. It's excellent coverage um, for kids 18 and under. And so that's an option in most states. Most states do have something uh, like that. Again, we can help you with all of that stuff. Um, you know, again, it, it's, it's, it's sometimes I don't say we have a health insurance crisis. I say we have an information crisis, right? And, and, mm -hmm. and we just got to get there. We just got to get the information out to people. Um, you know, there's nothing flashing. There's no, there's no signs, billboards. Right. That says, oh, your kids are eligible for chip. If you make less than fifty three thousand dollars, your kids are eligible for free chip. They're not advertising that. Um, and so so, you know, there's tons of programs out there. Uh, there. There's a solution for there's almost a solution for almost everybody. There's very rarely a time when someone walks into our office and and we can't find them something affordable and we can't we can't provide a solution. Uh, it, almost never. Right. And it's. It's not easy because it's not one size fits all. Nope, never. It never is. Yeah. Uh, this is great stuff. I I'm so glad that you touched on dependents and uh, those who are 65 and not retired uh, and those that are pre-65. This is great information. Thank you. Okay. And You're now, welcome. now we're going probably to uh, one of the darker uh, episodes coming up. Uh, so I hope it'll be short and not so dark, uh, which is long term care. So yeah, everybody should going to be pretty short. Yeah, everybody not fun. Every, everybody hang around uh, or uh, uh, when we release one on the playlist, uh, this is important for you to see as early in your career as possible. I'll just tease that much because I know people who've had these issues uh, and uh, alternatives, even if you don't have long term care and uh, you need that. So anyway, Aaron, again, this has been amazing uh, for, for talking about insurance. And it's interesting. You've, 
because like you I say, imagine that. yeah. So uh, what's wrong with you anyway? <laughs> I don't know. I get asked that a whole lot, Art. I, I'm telling you, what is wrong with you? I get that a lot. Well, I'm glad that we found, found you. Thank you. I'm glad you did too. I've really enjoyed this. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.